Uh, next question from Nailing Painting. How do you go from doing unpaid work, free products for posts, to paid promotions? I feel like I'm not big enough to ask for money, but I don't know where to draw the line. Any tips on charging for promoting a company's products? First off, I just want to say Mary Lou Nail Art. I've seen your work. It is so good. She is <laughs> oh, so talented. Nice Even in the profile pics, I remember her nails. <laughs> um, yeah, this is a good question. And and it's hard to it's give hard an exact to, answer yeah. to this too, right? I think for me, it, it wasn't an automatic shift. There wasn't one day where I like decided, okay, now I'm only doing paid work. It was a slow shift and it changed depending on the brands. Um, because it, it depends on the relationship. It really depends on like what you have established with the brand previously. Um, so I can remember a few examples of where I began to start feeling taken advantage of by brands. And by that, I mean, like I, I was doing a bunch of unpaid work for them. Mm -hmm. Um, and by that, I mean, like I would take swatch pictures or take pictures of their products and they would use them on their website or on their Instagrams to promote it. And I was not being paid except with product, which I guess they considered a form of payment. Mm -hmm. um, but slowly over time, like there's one particular example that stands out to me. Uh, I watermarked all my work. I always did, unless eventually someone paid me like to, to own that, that photograph. But yeah. if they didn't, it's, it's my property, so I watermarked it. And mm -hmm. you should too. <laughs> if you're a nail blogger <laughs> and it's your property, you should watermark your photos. But I remember a company that I worked with a lot and d did a lot for their business asked me one day for a favor and just said like, hey, do you mind, can you just take a picture of this because I need this version of this picture for my website and I'm just missing it. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, sure, I'm going to have my watermark on it though. Basically like implying to her, like, I'm happy to give you this favor, but like... She's not offering payment, so it will yeah. be my photo, but I'm happy to still put it on your website, I guess. And she goes, what, does it just come out of your camera with a watermark? Yeah. And I was put in a really weird position to be like, well, no, but, but you're not you, you don't want, it. you're not purchasing this from me. So <laughs> that's just one example of how I felt like brands were eventually expecting a lot of me because I was giving them a lot. Mm -hmm. And that was partially my mistake for feeling that way. And then also their mistake for taking advantage of what they could. That being said, these brands are businesses. And of course, they're going to capitalize on free promotion sure. when they can. So I understand that perspective. But at the same time, I felt like I wasn't valued or really being respected as a fellow business person, which is what I was trying to do. I realized like, hey, I can make a business too, but I wasn't mm -hmm. being valued. I wasn't getting the same treatment in return. So slowly these little instances started to happen. <laughs> um, and I, that's kind of where I drew the line. Yeah. And actually, I think that's a really useful line to draw. If a company wants to use your art, like in their advertising, in listings on their website, there's no way they should be getting that from you for free or in exchange just for product. I think... I can't imagine a scenario where that makes sense. So you should, it's really hard as an artist to mm -hmm. know your worth, right? Yeah. And I think, like, yeah, like you've already sort of indicated, you did do a lot for free. You established your worth to these companies. And then that allowed you to sort of have the conversations to be like, you know, a lot of people want my photos. I'm going to have to charge you at least, even though you didn't charge much at all, especially in the beginning. It was just like a sign of respect that they were willing to, pay anything at all yeah and then to have companies that were basically like expecting you to continue to give them free promotion that was a really shitty thing to realize a lot of companies just expected that of you the other thing to add to that i used to charge like 12 dollars for swatch pictures by the way just <laughs> just for some context mm -hmm. um the other thing is once i started gaining some popularity on instagram and the brands that i was working with on a pr basis realized that they wanted to take advantage of me even more because they realized that by me receiving their product, it meant that thousands, hundreds of thousands of yeah. eyeballs would see their product and they would ultimately be benefiting from me giving them free marketing. Mm -hmm. So when I you know, said, I now charge 
per, per swatch picture, which I do not think was greedy and was, <laughs> you know, far more than fair. So. And I wasn't even asking them to pay me for my influence. I was just charging for the photo itself, which yeah. in theory, if I didn't have any influence, that's what I should have been charging. Yeah. But yeah, it just became uh, kind of disheartened and... It didn't like hurt my feelings because I ultimately know this is just business and I understand from their perspective, of course, they're going to take advantage of this when they see it. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, to answer your question, if you start having these experiences where brands are taking advantage of you and you can recognize that, I think it's important. Maybe like talk to a friend, talk to a partner. Do you have anyone who's in business or photography or someone in your life and but like not just external business i think sorry to interrupt you but a really good point and i remember it made a big difference for you is when you became friends with other nail bloggers and you started very much sharing what you were hearing from other companies yes right didn't yeah. you start did you have like do you want me to talk about this didn't you have like a nail blogger yeah. union you started at one we point did. <laughs> yep because i and i still to this day although i'm not as as close with some of them yeah. um I still have so much respect for my fellow peers as nail bloggers, nail YouTubers, nail Instagrammers, whatever platform sure. you work on. Um, but there was definitely so much value in connecting with other people who were doing what I'm doing. So we could discuss like, hey, what's fair? This brand offered to pay me, but is asking you for the same thing and saying that, that they don't have any money to pay? That's not cool yeah. either. So, so just to be clear, it wasn't like a union. Like you guys had a group chat where yeah, you would like share what uh, what brands were telling you about how much they were paying and stuff, right? Yes, and I think that was important for empowering us as like artists and the people actually like producing these and people who had followings. Like a lot of us had followings that, and we all felt similarly taken advantage of for mm -hmm. making other businesses successful. Yeah, because I mean the hardest thing about being in the position of a swatcher is probably knowing like if you – are wanting to charge a brand there's probably a bunch of swatchers that will just step up and do it for free right so it's hard mm. to make that decision so the more yeah. swatchers all value their work especially if they're producing quality work that small or big brands would even want to use in an official capacity it's good if you guys sort of stick together <laughs> yes absolutely yeah. yeah all right i hope that helped a little bit mary lou